With so much information out there, it's hard to know just where to start when it comes to learning licks on the banjo. In this video, I'll share insights from my years of performing and teaching to help you figure out just where to focus your energies when it comes to learning licks. First off, let's be clear about what a lick is. My working definition is that it's a short phrase that can be learned, repeated, and reused. Let's begin with the first lick that is presented in the book Earl Scruggs and the Five String Banjo. It is important when first learning a phrase to separate the tasks that each hand must perform. The right hand is playing a four note alternating pattern in the first lick. Thumb, index, thumb, middle. Thumb, index, thumb, middle. And it would be counted one and two and three and four and. One thing that will help with timing your slide is to take out the second note of the roll and just leave the two eighth notes of the slide in there. One and two and three and four and. After you get comfortable doing that, go back and put in the note and try to match it right as you finish the slide. The notes in Earl Scruggs' book are presented in two four time, which means you would count this lick differently. One E and a two E and a. Whereas we will count it in four four time as one and two and three and four and. Our last variation of this first lick is to play it as two sixteenth notes, finishing the slide at the third fret, not the fourth fret. This will create a bluesier sound. Our second lick uses the same roll, the alternating roll, with a pull-off on the third string. It's played as sixteenth notes, quick, pull down, push in and pull down. You can get a similar sound by pushing up. At that point it's called a push-off. Either one starts with P, so it'll look the same in your tablature. Our third lick uses the alternating roll, but beginning on string four. We will be doing a hammer-on, which is to bring your second finger down onto the second fret of the fourth string. As you do so, bring it down as if it's like a magnet that's going to stick to the other magnet. Don't let it slip back up or you'll lose your tone. In both the hammer-on and the pull-off, you should begin right behind the fret. Using just our first three licks, we can begin to put together Part B of Cripple Creek. Three slides, a pull-off, and a hammer-on. a bit faster. Our fourth lick begins with the hammer on still on string four, but we'll use a forward roll. Thumb, index, middle, thumb, index on the third string. You use the index on the third string because you just used the thumb on a quick note on the fifth string. A variation of lick four is to do a slide from four to five on string four and continue with your forward roll. So your index finger will hit string three twice. This is affectionately known as the potato introduction. Usually you would play four potatoes before beginning a fiddle tune.
Our fifth lick will be to put the slide together with the beginnings of a forward roll. Thumb index middle thumb, the two to four slide of eighth notes. We now have the licks we need to put together the beginning of Cumberland Gap. And a little faster. The slide in lick 5 could be combined with a D7 chord and a forward backward roll to create this nice ending. Our sixth lick is the one where the slide begins the first part of Cripple Creek. When I say the first part, I'm talking about part A. Earl Scruggs uses part B as an introduction. So that slide begins on beat four, and it takes a full beat to complete it. Four, one. So you finish with your third finger on the fifth fret at beat one. Four, one. And it should vibrate the fifth string to give you a full G sound there. The same timing is involved in the lick in Foggy Mountain Breakdown. When you slide into your E minor chord, it's beat four, one, two, three, four. Just like this was four, one, two, three, four. Lick seven involves what has become known as the tag roll. Thumb, middle, thumb, index on the third where you just played the thumb. Combine that with a slide on the third string on the and of B2. One and two and three and four and. I like to call Lick 7 Earl's signature lick as he often signs off on his solos with this lick. You hear it at the end of Foggy Mountain Breakdown and other songs. Lick 8 is the first one that requires you to do a 3 to 2 pull off. And the 3 to 2 pull off, each finger is right behind the fret. Have both fingers in place as you push in and flick out on fret 3. You can either pull or push. I prefer to push in this case. Variation of this would be to use the alternating roll. That's a phrase that ends up in your love is like a flower and other Earl Scruggs solos. Lick 9 will be the famous Foggy Mountain Breakdown opening. We've saved it for this long because it is a more difficult lick than some of the earlier ones that we've done. First of all, it involves a roll where you put your index finger on string two, middle on string one, come back with your thumb on string two. Earl does this for emphasis. You can hear how beat two is hit a little bit harder. It is marked with an accent mark in the tab. We will combine that with a two to three hammer on, having your first finger already in place, hammer your second finger on frets two to three, each finger right behind the fret. When you leave that finger down, you still hear the sound of fret three. That is used in songs like Ralph Stanley's Train 45. When Earl did his song, Foggy Mountain Breakdown, he actually left out the second note of the roll, the middle finger. So the first hammer on is just by itself without any extra note. 
And then he also went to the open second string. That's the actual Foggy Mountain Breakdown lick. You can hear the accent in the recording. We'll go over our final lick in just a second. If you don't mind, take a second and consider subscribing to this YouTube channel. Leave a comment as to what you gained from this lesson or things you'd like to see in future lessons. And keep on picking. Our final lick, appropriately enough, is a final tag lick meaning that the song is over and we add a little bit of a shave and a haircut. So in the left hand, first finger on fret 9, third finger on fret 11, do a forward roll. Your index finger comes over on the right hand as your first finger comes over to fret 9 on the left hand all the way up to splitting the dots, 16 to 17. 